Thank you so much for coming in today, Ivy. Um, I'm really excited to work together and start your PT sessions. Thank you again um, for meeting me here. So first off, I'm just gonna go through a pre-exercise screen tool in preparation for your PT sessions. Mm -hmm. So if it's all right with you, I'm just gonna ask a couple of medical questions and record them on my laptop. So starting off, has your doctor ever told you that you have a heart condition or have you ever suffered from stroke? No. No. Do you ever experience unexplained pains in your chest at rest or during exercise? No. Awesome. Do you ever feel faint or have spells of dizziness during physical activity um, that may cause you to lose balance or stability? No. Have you ever had asthma? No. Do you have diabetes at all? No. No. Do you have any un oh sorry, any diagnosed muscle, bone or joint problems that you have been told that might um, be worsened through exercise? No. And do you have any other medical conditions that I should know about before we jump into exercise? No, I don't think so. Awesome. Easy peasy. And next up, I'm going to go through a PDQ. So it's just like a little questionnaire um, to help me assess what your goals are and then design your program for you. Mm -hmm. So first off, what are your expectations of the time that you will spend with me? Mm, maybe like four to six months. Yeah. And what outcomes do you want from your exercise program? Um, probably to improve strength and muscle mass. Yeah, awesome. And what is the single most important goal for you to achieve within this program? Um, probably like strength, but like mostly in like marker body. Yeah. So improve marker body strength. And what time frame do you expect to achieve your goals? Up to six months. Yeah, awesome. And aside from your time at the gym, how much additional time per day are you willing to engage in activity that helps you to achieve your goals? So this could be things like daily walks, taking the stairs, or home exercise. Um, yeah, probably like daily walks. Yeah. Is there a specific amount of time like per day? You might be able to put aside for this. Um, probably like half an hour to an hour. Yeah. It's a really good time. And are all aspects of your training completely up to you, or is there someone else that may affect your scheduling of your training sessions? No, just me. Yeah. And is it more important for you to continually be active and moving, or stationary during the workout? Um, probably an equal mixture of both. Yeah. Perfect. And when you need to reduce your stress, do you ideally enjoy activities that are more physical and strenuous or more relaxed and stationary? Um, yeah, probably both again. Yeah. Mixture. Mixture. Yeah. And do you enjoy exercise more when it involves a repetitive routine or one that offers variety? Variety. Okay. And does your occupation require continually moving or hands on work? A bit of both, really. Awesome. Okay. Would you say that your work is sedentary, active, or physically strong? Probably a mixture of both, really. Yeah, mixture. Yeah. And are there any hobbies that you enjoy? This can be inactive or active. Um, I like swimming. Yeah. And do you regularly participate in any recreational activities? Not really. No? No. Are you currently exercising at a gym or any outdoor, indoor PT sessions? Yes. Yeah, at a gym or more like PT? Um, no, just at a gym. Just yeah. like casual like spin classes and stuff yeah. like that. 
And doing your own thing as well. Yeah. 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 And so why is your goal so important for you right now? Um, just to improve overall health and fitness and like strength. Yeah. Um, just the, the well-being and to feel better. Yeah. And if you weren't to make these changes and stay the way you are or regress in my health, how would that affect your life and what consequences could occur? Um, I'd probably be a little bit more unhealthy, I guess, and um, uh, just feel a little bit more self-conscious, I guess, too, because I wouldn't yeah. be like, um, I wouldn't have the confidence that I would if I were to achieve my goals, maybe. Yeah. Perfect. And when you do successfully reach your goal, in what ways will life be different? Um, just like improved overall health. Um, and how it make you feel? Um, more energised. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just more confident, maybe? Yeah. And what benefits are most important to you? So if you were to feel stronger mm -hmm. and fitter, what else would you get out of that? I'd be more healthier and more energetic. And What about like in terms of um, your lifestyle in general? Like, do you think it might help with work? Yeah. Like your social interactions? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it'd be better in all aspects, really. Yeah. And on a scale of 1 to 10, how important is it to you to make those changes right now? Probably like an 8. Yeah. And why is it not a two or a three? Um, probably because they've been like goals that I've had for a while that I really want to achieve. Yeah. And what could make it an even higher number? Um, probably just finding the right exercise that I enjoy. Yeah. More um, focused, like specific to me. Yeah, good. Do you believe that you can make these changes? Yep. Good, I do too. And on a scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you? Maybe like a 6. And what would make this a high number? Um, like, yeah, the goals of like increasing my upper body strength and just overall like how I look too. Yeah. Like, so maybe like seeing some progress. Yeah, seeing yeah. progression as well, I guess. Awesome. And are you ready and willing to change at this time? Yes. And in what ways do you believe I can help you? Um probably just with exercise that's specific to like my goals and yeah. specific that are gonna work with me in my lifestyle. Yeah. And would you find it would be helpful if I had like regular check-ins and maybe like tracked your progress? Yeah, probably that might help yeah. me keep on track. That's it. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome to the PT session, Ivy. As you mentioned um, in our little interview, you do really want to build your strength, especially in the upper body. So today's session is completely upper body strength. So we have a variety of exercises, we can do three sets of each, um, the reps vary from six to eight, but we'll go through that when we get to the exercise. So before we start, I'm just going to do a couple of posture observations. So I'm just going to get you to just relax, stand normally how you ever would, don't feel like you have to tense or get up straight, just how you normally stand. Awesome, alright, so I'm going to start um, down at the bottom with your feet. So I can see that both your feet, you point your toes down slightly. Um, in terms of the bottom of your feet, you have very flat feet, so there's no arch there. And then moving up, I notice that your left knee wants to go more to the front rather than your right knee um, turns in a bit more. And then if it's all right, I'm just going to touch your hips. Mm -hmm. 
your hip line, they're um, quite equal, so quite even, there's no um, skewing there. And then, as I can see, on your right side, your thumb is right next to your body, so that's showing there's no rotation in your shoulder. Whereas on your left side, um, your thumb comes inwards a bit, so that's showing a little bit of rotation um, on your left shoulder. Moving up, so in your lower back, I can see there's a slight bit of an arch, so that's showing just like a slight sign of scoliosis, but nothing serious. Moving up um, with your shoulders, I notice that they are brought forward a little bit. And then in terms of your head, um, just because of that left shoulder rotation, it also makes your head rotate to the right a little bit. All right, now from the back view to the posterior view, so starting again here on the bottom, I can again see that your toes do point out and again you have that flat B foot. Moving up, I can see a little bit of um, flexion in the knees. So that just means they're more forward rather than back. Again, I can see that your hips are even level, but you do have that slight rotation with your left shoulder. Um, and then in terms of your scaps, I can see that they are um, pushed forward a little bit rather than inward. But other than that, that's all. Next up, I'm just gonna observe from um, the lateral view. So I'll start with your right side first. So starting at the bottom again, um, in regards to your ankles, I can see that they um, want to roll out just slightly. Um, again, with your knees, I can just see that slight flexion, but your right knee is um, quite forward and straight. Moving up, you can notice that your pelvis is slightly tilted back, and that's um, probably why you do have that just slight arch in your back. And then, again, your right shoulder is slightly brought forward, but it's not rotating much. All right, and now your left side. So, same thing again. Your toes are pointing straight forward on this side, but the ankle is rolling out just slightly. Um, I do notice that your left knee is more flexed than your right. Moving up, again, I can just notice that slight um, pelvis tilt to the front and just a tiny slight arch. And then again with this shoulder, um, it does have that rotation point to push forward and then more to your right. Um, and then I can notice that that's causing your head to quite slightly rotate as well. Uh, Ivy, next up, I'm just going to observe your posture doing a couple of movements. So first up, I'm going to get you to do a sagittal step. So you just want to step forward, slightly bend your knee and do a couple on each side if you can. So if you're ready, perfect. Um, what I can see here is that when you step forward, you have really nice um, straight toes and your knees slightly go in, but other than that, they're quite straightforward. If you could just do about two more on each side. Lovely. Good. The other thing is you have really good upright posture, so your trunk isn't wanting to go forward or backwards. Um, the other thing is you kept your shoulders quite still. Um, so yeah, other than that, great job. All right, next up, I'm just going to get you to do a lateral step. So if you just want to step to the side, slight bend. Same thing again, if you can do a couple on each side, that would be great. is that both sides you do point your toes out slightly but your knee does follow which is good and it does go over your toe. The other thing is on your right side I notice that your trunk doesn't lean forward as much rather than on your left side you do lean a bit more. The other thing that's um, I did notice as well is that when you step out the other leg stays completely straight but your ankle does rotate with you. And then there's one more thing. Could you just do one more on this one? Oh yeah, that's 
of the thing is that your um, head does follow your trunk as well. So as you lean forward, your head goes with it, you don't keep up. All right, and lastly, I'm just gonna get you to do a transverse step. So I want you to face the back, you're gonna reach diving down, both sides, okay? Awesome. It, nice. Lovely work. Good. So what I can notice, if you just do about two more on each side, is that you really do have good range. You can get down. With your left side, I notice that you point your toes outwards just slightly more um, you're able to reach down all the way um, what i've noticed is that on your left side you're able to rotate your trunk and head up a little bit more above than on this side also as you're reaching again um, like the last step when you step out that leg is a bit straight and you don't have to lift that heel off to get down which shows really good ankle mobility all right that's it so now we're just going to do some self line fashion releases, so SMRs, and we're just going to be using the foam roller today. So after um, observing your back, I notice there is a bit of tension in there, and that's what's causing your pelvis to tilt and have a bit of an arch. So we're going to do a roll back and roll out. So you just want to start with the foam roller up against the top of your glutes, and you just want to slowly lean into the foam roller, and then slowly roll forward. Nice and slow, you should feel a bit of tension releasing. Let's find that spot where you feel the most tension is. I want you to just hold it there for a few seconds. Let that release a little. And once you feel like you're ready, you can just slowly roll in that area. Just because I did notice there was a bit of rotation in that hip, so that will release any tightness as well. So you're going to start with it just kind of near your hip and then going down your leg until again you find that spot where you can feel the most tightness. I just want you to rest it there for a couple of seconds. That's it. Alrighty, Ivy. Um, lastly, I'm just going to give you a couple of mobilizers to help you with what we observed today. So, first up is a incline crawl pattern. Um, I'm going to do it on the bench here. So, the reason we're doing this one is it's going to help with extension of your thoracic spine and also mobility of your scaps. Because I did notice that um, you didn't get much movement and they are pushing forward a little bit, so it's going to help with that. So I'll just demonstrate first off. So you're almost in like the plank position and you're going to step that foot forward and let your hips drop down. What you want to focus on is not letting that back arch and keeping a nice upright back. Your head will just follow your knee almost when you step out, but you don't need to flex it up or push it down. So you really want to get that hip flexion. Into the ground. That's it. Good. 
just happening more on each side. That's it. Awesome work. So this is something you can easily do at home. You can just grab a chair or like a lower table, but make it work. All right, and our second mobilizer is an anterior knee drive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stand these feet shoulder width apart. You really wanna focus on digging your heels in. Um, the other thing is um, from your hips upwards, you want all to be one line. So we're trying to minimize that arch because what we did notice was you had that, that slight arch in your back. This is also gonna help with your um, ankle mobility. So you're trying to dig those heels into the floor, stopping them from coming up. And you just naturally wanna let gravity push down towards you and how you just naturally want to move. So if you want to have a go at that. That's it. Good. So you're bending down to as comfortable. And you'll notice the more you do this, um, especially at home or if you want to come in earlier, we can do it before your session, uh, the more range you'll get as you go on. Great job. So first off, you start with a warm up. So if you want to start with what? And then reaching up, and it's going to be 30 seconds of those. Okay. Yeah, nice. Good. Then you reach up. That's it. Good job. Yeah, 10 more. That's it. One more. Good. All right, coming down onto the mat. So this one you can do a push up either on your knees or your toes. So we're going to press down, coming up into a plank, and rotating up. That's it. Down. Do the thrust rotation. Follow your hand with your eye line. So looking up to the ceiling each time. That's it. Good. up again, we're just going to go into some neck rolls, so the only thing that should be moving is your head, so just go one way around, nice and slow, and then the other way, Five. Good. And stand up into our arm 
Arm circles. So start small. Slowly lift the gut. Let that leg come forward. And then close the gut. That's it. So, So when you're ready, we're going to do this for 30 seconds. Like it. Like it. And then press them up. Good. All right, off you go. Nice and slow control. Like it. Like it. Good. That's it. Good. 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 Squeezing up. That's it. Good. Nice straight back. Lovely form. That's it. And turn it around. Almost there, last ten. Got it. Good job. Almost there. Three, two, one. Good job. All right. Next up, we have our bench press with dumbbells and an also an incline. So, so now sit down. Digging the heels into the ground. So we're going to bring um, dumbbells up to our shoulders. So press it up, let them just meet at the top and have a tiny little gap. And then come back down into that 45 degree angle. Really press your back into the bench. Squeeze your glutes, dipping those heels into the ground. So up, and back it up. So we're going to do eight reps. So you're balancing on these little balance boards. So, 
You want to bring the bar up, up your shoulders, across your chest. Mm -hmm. Standing on your knees, getting our belly. And then you really squeeze that forward, not up, not back. Up. And then you come back down. Nice and smooth tension. You've just got six reps on this one. So when you're ready, see if that weight's comfortable. Sit. Good. Does that weight feel good? Yeah. Yep, so we're gonna press up, six reps, that's it. Good. And up. And left. Yeah, you get it. Nice. And up. Good. Two more. Sit. Last one. Big press. Yes. Good job, nice. Alright, Ivy, so next up we have some chin-ups. So we're doing a overhand grip. So just coming up, see how this resistance band feels, otherwise we can add more or take less resistance off. So you just set down to the hand. Bring yourself to come all the way down to the arm of the center. And then you're going to bring yourself up, you're going to squeeze the shoulder press all up, and slowly down the neck. Yes, yeah, so that would have rushed in the movement, because otherwise it's too big. Okay. So slowly up, squeeze, slowly down. Make sure our chin gets above your bar. So for this one, we're just doing five reps. Alright, when you're ready, that's it. Good. Arms extend. Coming up. That's it. That's it. Big squeeze at the top. Squeeze. Slowly the way up the way down. Good. Nice. straight up, we're not sitting down, so we work up. So we're starting the dumbbells down in front of us on our thighs. We're just squeezing dumbbells up. So this is a really nice bicep curl. So you don't want to rush it, so that's using more momentum. So you want to use complete bicep strength. So up, all the way up, and all the way down. And don't let it fall and swing at the bottom. You want to control the movement. So we're doing it slowly, lowering it down. How you go with that one? Down up, that's it. Next, sitting all the way down. That's it, good. And squeeze the glutes and core to get that position. Good. That's it. So you got six here. That's three. Good job. Halfway. Up. Final exercise, we're using our power bags. So we're doing a sit up, but we're also going to do a little bit of a push with the power bag. So we're rolling it over, so we're going to lay back, we're going to sit up, and pushing the power bag in front of us. So that's really going to tug your arms as well. Ready, you come back in, sitting up, pressing forward. See how that weight feels, see how that goes. Really engaging the core on this one. So I want to make sure we're not using our back. Yep. Pressing the bag forward. That's it, good. It's on the way down. So we have eight reps here. We've got it. That's it. Good. Trying to keep our neck in line. That's it. Sit up. You've got it. That's it. Nice. Almost there. Three more. You've got it. Up. Good girl. That's it. So use that core. Sit back. Dig your heels into the ground as well. You've got it. Last two. Up. That's it. Good. Last one. Yes. Good job. Nice. Right, we're getting to your down. So starting off, we're going to start with an arm bar. 
into a child's pose. So put the glutes back on your heels, arms extended in front, and head down. And then stretch out to your shoulders. That's it, so holding that position. Hold for 20 more seconds. Yeah. 